we're going to build an app which allows you to update your status using only emoji. And you can see the emoji status of everyone else using the app. We'll be wiring up several core Firebase components, including authentication, cloud functions, and Firestore. So you can take what you learn here and apply it to pretty much anything else that you're building. Hey everyone, I've been doing a bunch of interviews lately as part of the Tech Track series, which has been really fun, but I wanted to build an app with you, which is how this channel got started. And so the app we're building in this series, I think is really cute. It's called Emoji Status, and it combines a bunch of really important Firebase services in a nice package. The idea of the app is that we can use Emoji to broadcast a status or a story. Emojis are Unicode characters, and they've become really popular as a means of commun communication in the past few years because more and more phones are able to render them properly. In this video, I'll go through the app in a bit more detail, I'll talk about the architecture, and then we'll actually start coding in the next video. I'm also planning on publishing this app, which is super exciting, and so I'll leave a link for that when it gets approved in the description, right below the like button. I have the app running here in the emulator, and the only way that we allow the user to create an account or sign into their account on emoji status is through Google. And because I've already previously authenticated via Google, I'm able to hit that button and automatically go into the main screen of our application. And in fact, we only really have the login screen and main screen. So this is pretty much all there is. And I've signed in as myself, Rahul Pandey. And what you're seeing here is my status, my most recent updated status, along with the most recent status for every other user in the app. And what you can look in, up here in the menu is I can log out or I can actually update my status. So let's say I want to update it to I'm playing uh, you know, basketball and I'm not doing so hot. So I'm crying about it. I tap OK. And then that update gets sent immediately to Firestore, which gets shown in our recycler view over here. The other cool thing about this is that as soon as anyone in the app updates their status, that will also be immediately reflected in our app. For example, my friend Branner, Branner Bispis, he's actually been making some banana bread. And so let's say that he updates his status. And right away, as soon as he published it, it got updated on our end in the emulator here. So we're going to build exactly this. The published version of the app has a few extra features, which I'm happy to walk through if people are interested. But the only other thing I want to do in this video is walk through the architecture and how the pieces fit together. Like I mentioned in the intro, there are three Firebase services that we'll use to power our emoji status app. First is Firebase Authentication for signing in and sending out of our app. Next is Firebase Cloud Functions, which allows us to execute code on a server, some JavaScript code on the server, whenever an event happens in our app. And then third is Cloud Firestore, which is essentially the database for our app. And so hopefully in the next few minutes, you'll see how these different pieces fit together. The first is Firebase Authentication. Users need an identity in your app. Basically, any meaningful app is going to want to associate the data that the user creates in the app to some sort of server or some data in the cloud, just so that if I wipe the data on my phone or if I get a new phone, and when I sign into the app, I expect my experience to be similar to what it was before. And so for that, you need to have some way of creating a unique identity for your user. There are three broad options for logging in, at least as presented from the Firebase authentication tool. One is you can allow the user to sign up by email and password. Second, you can use a federated identity provider, for example, Google, Facebook, Twitter, GitHub, etc. Or third, you can use phone number sign up. And we're going to be talking about the federated identity provider. And in particular, we're going to be allowing users to sign into the app using Google. And the reason I prefer this method is because with email password, no one wants to remember another password, right? So typically, if you already are signed into Google or Facebook, it's the easiest way to get people into your app. And the second thing is that the use of Google sign-in or Facebook sign-in allows us to bootstrap the user profile. We get information about the user that we probably wouldn't have gotten with the phone number sign-up approach or email password sign-up approach. And in particular, what I'm talking about is the display name of the user and the photo URL of the user, so a profile picture. Um, and that kind of makes your app feel more complete. So one of the annoying things about Firebase authentication is that once you sign into the app, once you create an account in the app, 
That user entity that's created has a fixed set of properties, such as the email, name, and photo. However, if you want to store anything else about the user, for example, in our app, we want to store the string of emoji representing that user's status, or maybe you could imagine we want to store the updated time of that status or any number of other things, that is your responsibility. You have to store other properties on your own. And that's where Cloud Firestore comes in. Cloud Firestore is going to be the database which keeps track of the user along with their status. There's one more annoyance about Firebase authentication, which is that the currently signed in user can only get information about themselves. But if you think back to the main screen of our application, we want to be able to query for all the other users in our application. And so in order to do that, we again have to now, every time a user is created in our app, we have to create a user document or a user entry in our database in Firestore and store the data for that user. So here's what this will look like. We're going to have Firestore. We're going to have a collection called users. And inside of the users collection are various documents. Each document represents one user. For example, here is Brenner Bispus, my friend. And they have a certain status, which is represented by that field called emojis. And so this is where Firebase Cloud Functions comes in. As soon as Firebase Authentication tells us that a new user has been created, then we want to trigger a cloud function to run to automatically add another document to the user collection. So in general, cloud functions allow us to run code when certain events are triggered. And so in our application, we're going to be running some JavaScript code when the user account is created. And that is what is going to be adding to the user's collection with some default emoji status, which the user can then update. So hopefully now, this architecture diagram makes more sense. We have Firebase Authentication, which is in charge of signing and signing out. And whenever a new account is created, that's going to trigger a message to Firebase Cloud Functions. And Firebase Cloud Functions is then going to create a new user document, which will be put inside of Cloud Firestore. And that will get sent down to our client, our Android app, which is where it's going to be shown in the Recycler view. And if I click on that edit icon, that pencil icon in the menu, and I update my status, that will send a message up to Firestore to say, hey, I want to update my emoji status and send that out to all the other clients as well. So even though there's actually a few moving pieces here, the whole app is less than 200 lines of code. Um, and the way I want to build this out with you is first, in the next video, we're going to be building the login flow. Then we're going to create a new user document with a cloud function. So whenever the user signs up, we're going to create a new user document. Then we're going to implement that list of users in a recycler view. And we're going to query from Firestore to get that data. Then we're going to be allowing the user to update their status using that edit icon. And finally, we're going to restrict the entry of what you can put in that edit text to only be emoji. I'll leave a link to the code that we write along with some helpful references in the description. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm happy to help as much as I can. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you get notified when the next part comes out. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.